Previously, I added water cooling to an MSI GP66. The method that I used for that was to make basically a clone of XMG's uh, Oasis system that they have in their Neo 16s and some of their newer models. To accomplish that, you needed to heat up the entire heatsink from the laptop to about 140 to 150 degrees, use a low temperature solder paste, and hand bend a copper pipe to fit as closely as possible to the heatsink. Obviously, because of the temperatures and the pressurized pipes, this isn't a very ideal way to try to make a mod that you're just doing to basically not have to listen to the fan noises. In the spirit of trying to find a safer way to do the mod, as well as by the suggestion of someone else on a Discord, I started looking into trying to use these copper blocks off of Amazon to basically make a heatsink to just put onto the laptop heatsink with thermal putty. So in that way, that would conduct the heat away without needing to solder anything on. The more that I looked at this, though, as I was trying to solder everything together, it looked horrible, for one. And then on top of that, each of the solder joints is just sitting there presenting a point of failure if there wasn't good penetration, if it gets bumped in the wrong way. Continuing down that train of thought, though, I started to think about RAM water blocks that I kept seeing pop up on the different water cooling subs and elsewhere and realized that most RAM water blocks are actually the same dimensions as the one I was trying to make, only they're made by an actual manufacturer and have O-rings and are bolted together so they're serviceable and you can take them apart. So I decided to start looking into those more. I chose these Alpha Cool blocks specifically because the screws are on the top on the water chamber side instead of the cold plate side. Originally, it was supposed to be just in case I needed to solder it in the end instead of being able to use thermal putty, but thankfully that hasn't been the case. Despite that being my original reason for why I bought the water block, it actually turned out that it still would be a perfect fit because the cold plate is actually four millimeters thick and the gap between the bottom cover for the SCAR-16 and the heatsink is actually really close to being about four millimeters as well. And so I'm able to just put a hole in the bottom case cover and slap the water block in between the case cover and the heatsink, and it just gets held right in place directly over the CPU and GPU die. For the case mod that needed to get done to make sure that it wouldn't be just resting on top of the water block, I used Fusion 360. I also used it to plan the external radiator, which this time, instead of using Amazon parts, I went ahead and used the EK Quantum flat reservoir and pump combo with an actual D5 pump. I'm just trying to go for a bit more quality this time, and then also I don't plan on taking the radiator with me places. It's going to be more of a radiator stays at home and then the laptop just goes on its own if I take it anywhere, as opposed to the MSI where I was planning on taking both as a, as a paired combo everywhere. And then just to reiterate again, as we're looking at this with all the quick disconnects, this is completely removable, and I actually have a stock case cover to swap it out if I do want to go take it on a plane anywhere, since obviously for air travel you can't be having a uh, full of block of water hanging off the bottom of your laptop. Getting into the testing here, I'm going to have throttle stop cap the CPU at 4.8 gigahertz, just so that that way we're not dealing with any instances of the CPU boosting higher and then just maintaining the temperatures the same as they were, since right now we're trying to just compare the temps with the water cooling versus the air cooling. Same as last time, I'm going to do the air cooling first and then get into the water cooling after. Now we've got Jack up here to help us do a sound comparison while the intro for Metro goes. Oh, we're 
That's my three main games on air cooling, which I will admit, I do need to revise the case model a little bit. I feel like I'm choking out the fans a tiny bit more than I want to. I'm going to add a bit more ventilation and hopefully get that air cooling to be better than it was stock like I was able to with the MSI. But now we're going to go on to water cooling here. Okay. As I was getting the uh, water cooling set up there, my chair was stolen. So I guess now Jack is going to be doing the uh, temperature testing as well as here's the sound comparison. This is again the Metro introduction, but now with the water cooling hooked up. As it is now, I'm stoked about this. There's no danger of bursting a pipe and ruining your air cooling. There's no bursting a pipe and hurting yourself. It is just cut out a rectangle sized for the RAM block, print out a case spacer, and slap it on there. I'm using Upsiren Pro Thermal Putty right now, and it's getting a 30 degree difference in these games, and including on a Dead Space, if you notice, the air cooling was thermal throttling it while playing that, but with the water cooling, it's down at 66 degrees instead of 96. And so it's, it's a massive difference, and hopefully if I can get a bit more ventilation added in with the revised case spacers on the bottom, it'll make it even better for air cooling. And again, fully removable. It's not even how before it was soldered, so you'd need to get a new heat sink to replace it. It is just... Take, takes exactly as much time as it takes to pull the bottom cover off to repaste or do anything else. Beyond stoked with this with how much safer it is, and it actually works better than the other version as well.